As software developers, we like to automate things. At least I do, because I'm pretty lazy. Writing software tests is a lot of work. So in this video, I'm going to cover a technique called model-based testing or stateful testing that you might like if you're just as lazy as I am. Though model-based testing or stateful testing is not suitable for all your projects, if you can use it, it's extremely powerful. This video, by the way, is a collaboration with Zach Hatfield Dodds, who is the main developer of the Hypothesis package that's really useful for testing. So really enjoyed working with Zach on this video, and I hope you'll enjoy the example as well. Writing tests actually really helps you understand how your code works in a variety of situations. If you wanna become better at judging your own code as well as somebody else's code, I have a free workshop for you on code diagnosis. You can get access to the workshop by going to ion.codes slash diagnosis. It contains lots of practical tips of how to do code reviews quickly, but still being very effective. And I also look at a few existing libraries and review the code of those libraries. You're probably using those libraries right now in your own code base. So ion.codes slash diagnosis to get access for free. The link is also in the description of this video. Now, let's dive into the example. Here's the example that I'm going to use today. It's a line item class. A line item has a description, a price, and a quantity, and there's a total property that multiplies the two. And we have an order class, which has a customer, which is a string. There's a bunch of line items in a list, default that's empty. And there's a couple of convenience methods like adding a line item, removing a line item, or updating the quantity of a line item. And then it keeps track of a cached value to compute the total price of the order. And it updates that whenever you take some action. So when you add one, it's going to add the total of that line item to the cache. If you remove it, it's going to remove from the cache. And when you update the quantity, it first subtracts the total, updates the quantity, and then adds the total again. Now, this update line item quantity in terms of design is maybe not entirely how you would want to set it up because that's probably something you'd want to do in the line item itself and not in the order. But for the example, I just wanted to keep things simple. So I'm doing it like this. And it introduces some complexity, which is useful for writing tests. So how do you write tests for this? Well, you probably have to start thinking about all the different cases. So we're going to create an order, add some line items, update some quantities, remove line items again, etc. Here I have an example of, let's say, a starting point of doing that. So I'm using PyTest here. I have a test order function that creates an order, adds a couple of line items, and then I'm going to assert that the total is 44. I have another one where I'm simply testing the line item itself. I'm testing removing a line item, and I'm testing updating the quantity. And now when I run PyTest, it's going to run these tests for me and all of these tests pass. Now, the problem is that there's actually lots of different cases here that we have to think about. In this case, we just checked adding a couple of line items, removing them and updating the quantity, but we probably want to do all sorts of combinations of those things, like first adding, then removing another one, updating the quantity, checking that all the totals still match up. So that's quite a few cases to think about. And Ideally, we don't want to do all of that manual test writing work. So this is where model-based testing, also called stateful testing, comes in. It's a testing mechanism that relies on models to design and potentially also run software tests. Now you can approach this really formally. It's not what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to show you a practical application of this. So how does model-based testing fit in and how does it compare to other types of tests? Well, let's start with the most basic form of testing, which is writing a unit test. What a unit test does is that you define some fixed set of data, fixed set of values, then you run an exact sequence of actions and you check whether the outcome matches what you expect. This is exactly what we're doing in this test order file. So for example, I have here test line item. I have some data that I predefine, like a line item here with a, um, price of one and the quantity of two, and I just check that the total equals two. That's a very simple unit test. So we test one input with an exact sequence of actions. If you use a hypothesis, you can take this a step further by introducing property-based testing. And that means that you're going to test a whole range of automatically generated inputs according to some constraints, and also test that exact sequence of actions. For example, here, I have an example of that same line item test 
but I'm generating two integer values using the integers strategy from hypothesis. I'm creating the line item with that generated price and quantity, and then I'm asserting that the total equals the price times the quantity. And then when I run PyTest, now it's also going to run that property-based test. It's simply going to check the property that the total always is the price times the quantity. This is a pretty trivial example, but it shows the key difference between unit test, one input, fixed sequence of actions and property-based tests, many inputs and still one sequence, fixed sequence of actions. Model-based testing allow you to test many inputs like property-based test, but also many different sequences of actions. And this is especially useful if you have many different actions that can be combined in various ways. This is exactly the issue we have with the order, adding, removing line items, updating quantities, all kinds of different combinations that we want to test. And this is exactly where model-based testing can really help. If you use hypothesis, what happens with model-based testing is that you let hypothesis choose which method to call next. And that's all built in. So how does this actually work? Well, you start by listing all the possible actions. For example, creating a line item, adding a line item to an order, removing a line item from an order, updating the quantity of a line item and other actions that you might want to add to the system as well. Next to all these different actions, you should add sanity checks that validate that some property holds true. For example, you could compute from time to time that the total of the order still is the same as the total of all of the line items. What you then do is that you put all those actions and sanity checks into a class. The actions are called rules and the sanity checks are called invariants. When you run a model-based test, hypothesis is going to repeatedly choose an action to run and then execute that method. And then it's going to run all the sanity checks methods and check that those invariants are still valid. So together, these rules and invariants form a state machine. Next to these rules and invariants, you can also define preconditions that must hold before the rule can actually be applied. For example, you can only add a line item to an order after it has been created. Or under the precondition that the order is empty, there are no line items in it, we can verify that the total is zero. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like. It helps others on YouTube find this content as well. So let's start by writing a couple of model-based tests. I've already done some preparatory work here. So I've added a couple of imports that we're going to need and I've created a simple class called order test that inherits from the rule-based state machine. So this is going to be the state machine that the model-based testing is going to use. And then finally, I'm getting the test case out of the order test class so that I can then use it with PyTest. So the first thing that I'm going to do is we're going to create some objects that we're going to need in our test. One thing that we're going to need is an order that we can test. So I'm going to store that as an instance variable. So this is an order and it's an order for John Doe. We all know him, right? And then we have the line items and initially that's just the empty list. So I'm going to leave it like this. And then what we also need is we need to keep track of line items that we're creating. So I'm going to add here another variable called line items. And this is a list of line items like so and initially that's going to be the empty list so that's our starting point point. and now we can start adding the actions to our rule-based state machine so one action is create line item and this is going to create a line item and store it in the self dot line items list and what is that going to need well it will need a description which is a string, it's going to need a price integer and it's going to need a quantity, which is also an integer. And this is not going to return anything because we simply store it in the list like so. So the only thing that this does is self.lineitems.append and then we create a new line item with the description, the price, and the quantity. So at the moment, this is just a method in a class. We need to indicate to hypothesis that this is actually a rule that it can apply. So for that, we use the rule decorator and we simply provide it with the strategies of how to create the description, price and 
quantity inputs in order to apply this rule. So description, that's going to be a text strategy. So this is just going to generate random text for us. We have price, which is going to be an integer. And we have quantity, which is also going to be an integer. And Hypothesis has many of these different data generating strategies. You can also do all kinds of combinations of those. It's uh, very powerful. So this is a very simple rule to create a line item. Next, we can create a rule that adds a line item to an order. And what we need to do now is draw a line item from this list of line items that we have here. And the way that we do that is by a rule that gets a data strategy. And then here the parameter is also a data. This is a search strategy. This also doesn't return anything like so. And now we can use the data strategy to draw an item. So I have my line item and I do data.draw and then I'm going to use sampled from strategy that's going to get self dot line items. So this is our line item. And then we can add it to the order. So there we go. So now we have two rules, one to create line items and one to add line items to the order. Let's also add a sanity check. So that's another rule. And the sanity check is that, let's call that total agrees. Also doesn't return anything. And here we're going to assert that the sum of line item total for each line item in self.order.line items is the same as self.order.total, which is the total price property. So there we go. When I run this, you'll see we're going to get an error. You see hypothesis here tries to sample from a length zero sequence. And how does that happen? Well, it initializes the state machine, but then immediately it tries to add a line item to an order. So we forgot something, which is that this one, add line item to order, actually needs a precondition, which is that we can only add a line item to an order if we created line items before. So for that, we can use the precondition decorator. And that gets a function. So we can use lambda for that. And it's going to get self, the object. And the precondition is that the length of self dot line items is larger than zero. So it has to create a line item before it can add one to the order. Let's try this again. Now we get another error and that's actually a problem in that I should have done here an add line item call. Let's try this one more time. There we see now the stateful test pass. So let's now build out this test suite a bit. We've added line items to the order. Let's also create a rule for removing line items from the order. Remove line item from order. Also here we're going to need the data strategy to draw a line item from the order class also returns none, then I'm going to copy this line. But we're not going to sample from self.line item, we're going to sample from self.order.line item because we're going to remove a line item and that's already in the order. So this is our line item. And then we're going to do self.order.remove line item, line item, like so. Also here we need a rule and a precondition. I'm just going to copy this. But here, of course, we have to make sure that self.order.line items is not empty because we can't remove a line item from the order if it doesn't contain any line items. So now we have remove line item from order. I can run my test again and we see this still passes. Now let's add another rule. For example, we might try to remove a line item from the order that's not in the order. And that, of course, should raise an error. So remove line item from order raises error. And again, we're going to need the data search strategy. It's going to return none. 
I'm going to draw a line item from the self dot line items, and then I'm going to check that by test dot raises. And let's say we assume that this raises a value error. And then we do self dot order dot remove line item the line item. So here we have again precondition and a rule. Like so. And in this case, we want the precondition to be that order doesn't contain any line items and that we already created a line item. So line items should have length larger than zero. Let's run the test again. There we go. And now we see we get an error. And hypothesis gives us the sequence of actions that it took in order to reproduce the error. So what did it do? Well, it created the state machine. It then created a line item with a price and quantity of one. And then it tried to remove that line item from the order. But actually what happens is that it didn't raise a value error at all. So we get some assertion error that the total no longer agrees. And we also see that if you look at the order class, removing the line item doesn't raise any error if a line item is not in the list. So what we're going to do here is if line item not in self dot line items, we're going to raise a value error line item not in order like so. Let's run the test again. And now we see that the test passes once more. Let's add one more rule here. For example, we may want to test that updating the quantity of a line item also works correctly. So I'm going to add another rule. And also here, we're going to need the data strategy like so. And I'm going to update the quantity. So I'm also going to need a quantity integer, which I'm going to generate using the integers strategy. And then our method is called update line item quantity, like so. Self, and we're going again to provide the data quantity integer going to return none. Also here, of course, we might want to add a precondition that the length of self.order.lineitems is larger than zero, like so. And then we're going to draw the line item from the order object and we're going to self order dot update line item quantity line item and the new quantity is going to be the generated value save this and let's see what happens now by test there we go boom we get another error so what's happening here let's take a look at what hypothesis came up with so you see that it created the order test rule based state machine then it created a line item and then it added that line item to the order but then it added the same line item another time to the order. And then it tries to update the quantity. And indeed, this is a bug in the code, which of course I introduced on purpose, but it's still there. So update the line item quantity simply subtracts the total of the line item from the cache, updates the quantity and then adds it again. So this assumes that there is exactly one occurrence of the line item in the order. And Hypothesis figured out that if you add it multiple times, the same item, then updating the quantity is going to break things. So that means our caching solution is actually inadequate. So what can we do? Well, we can kind of make caching a bit simpler, for example, by introducing a method called update total cache. And that's simply going to compute this in post in it. We're going to call this update total cache like so. And now instead of doing it like this, we can simply call the update total cache method. Like so. And we're going to do the same thing right here. Let's try this again by test. And now again, the test. 
passes. What you can also do is add more of these invariants, more of these sanity checks. So now we simply have a total agrees, but I could make a special case, for example, with a precondition. where the number of line items in the order equals zero. So if that's the precondition, then we can have a rule. Let's call that total agrees zero, like so. And here we're going to assert that self.order.total equals zero. It's a simple special case that we can explicitly include in our test. And then when we run this again, hypothesis is also going to add this sanity check. I think model-based testing, stateful testing, is a really nice addition to your testing toolkit. It will be particularly helpful when you have cases where there's lots of possible combinations of actions and you don't want to write those tests manually. There's a few interesting things happening around hypothesis. One is that they're one of the earlier adopters of the PEP 754 exception group feature, which was added to Python 3.11, and they're using it to collect errors from various different tests, so that's pretty useful. The second thing is that Hypothesis also integrates nicely with a tool called Hypofuzz, and that's actually developed by Zach as well. It's a tool that basically runs on your code and that checks what happens if you provide it with all types of malformed inputs. For example, we have a function that expects an integer, so you're going to test what happens when you provide it with a string or a list. Hypothesis also works with Crosshair, and this is a tool that analyzes your code. And if you use type annotations, like I'm always doing, then you can formulate next to that certain post conditions. And then Crosshair is going to check that the post conditions hold using Hypothesis under the hood. Both Hypofuzz and Crosshair are tools that are intended to run for a longer time on your code. So it's very different from, let's say, running a, a small set of unit tests. It's really something that you should probably run almost continuously on your code to continuously detect bugs for you. And the nice thing is that if those tools find bugs, they're going to add it to the database. And then the next time you run the test, it's going to try those things again to make sure you actually fix those bugs. Finally, I want to thank Zach, the main contributor to Hypothesis, for helping me out with preparing this video. If you want to learn more about Hypothesis main features, I did a video about that recently. You can watch that next by clicking here. Thanks for watching and see you next week.